so let's start with how you should how you can install OpenDNSSEC. Oops. Uh, first of all, there are some recommendations on the hardware, but we don't actually have any requirements, or it just depends on if you have really large number of zones. But if you just have like one hundreds of zones, then then th there shouldn't be any problem. But just to give you some information about how he utilizes the different stuff. And if you think about the CPU, uh, we only use one thread per zone, but we do use multiple threads when we have multiple zones. And that's uh, it's because we uh, each zone is assigned to a worker, and that worker uses one thread. And then you also, if you have multiple zones, then you will, as I said during the last presentation, utilize the, the crypto accelerator, uh, the crypto card much better. So if you're only going to sign one zone in the current version of OpenDNSSEC, you won't gain anything by having multiple cores. But that will be fixed, as I said, in, in a future version of OpenDNSSEC. Then we have the hard drive. Um, and since we're using uh, temporary files to do the signing, we have to remember, for instance, uh, all the signatures that we have created because we are reusing the signatures. Uh, we are also having NSEC and NSEC3 change. Uh, we have um, the sorted zone, etc. So I think uh, in total we can have up to seven times the zone signs in temporary files, but those are cleaned up during uh, when we're working. But I think the minimum is five times the zone size. But that shouldn't be any problem with to today's hard drives. And also that you have to remember that we do the sorting in memory. So if you have a really big zone, you have to have extra memory in order to not, so you don't do a lot of paging because then it takes longer time to do sorting of your zone. And uh, when we developed OpenDNSSEC, we had focused to have support of all the Unix systems. So we have <laughs> tested it on various platforms, and these are some of them. Uh, we haven't, I don't, we do, don't support Windows, so we have to run one of these. And if you don't want to compile from uh, source code directly, there are some pre-built binaries in packages that you can just run, for, l run for instance, apt-get install on Ubuntu and Debian. Uh, but we also do have packages in FreeBSD, Gentoo, NetBSD, and I think we have Red Hat in a couple of weeks as, as well. So what operating systems do you use? Do you have any? Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Debian. Debian. Debian, yeah. CentOS. CentOS. Yeah. So... But CentOS is uh, yeah. Red Hat, yeah. yeah. Are you running on? Yeah, I'm running on Windows and Linux. Yeah. yeah. And we have some packages coming up for Red Hat as well, and CentOS. And uh, but uh, we are not the ones who maintain the, the packages. There are different people maintaining the different packages. But you can find a list on the web page if you have any questions about the different packages then you can take take it directly with the package maintainers. Uh, but you can also ask questions on open and like user list as well, if there are any questions. We do have some dependencies in open DNS uh, First of all, we use LDNS to do all the DNS handling, for instance, parsing the zone file, um, reading the resource records, and maintaining the DNS tree in our memory. And then we apply signatures on top of that using the HSMs. And uh, currently we require the latest versions of LDNS. And uh, the reason for that is because we have found some bugs in the software. And that's always good because we're, when we're doing the development of OpenDNS, like we really test everything that it, it should work. So that's why we're re recommending the latest version of LDNS. 
I think it's 164. And 165 is coming up. And uh, for our configuration, we use XML. And then you have some libraries that you have to install in order for OpenDNSSEC to be able to parse the XML files. And uh, the next one is for the auditor, all the Ruby stuff. Uh, but the auditor is optional, so you don't have to install Ruby. But if you want to install and use the auditor, then you have to install Ruby, Ruby Games, DNS Ruby, and also libopensl, OpenSSL for Ruby. And um, then you have the option to use different databases backend to open DNSSEC. You can either use SQLite or MySQL. And uh, that row, SQLite, is only three dependencies, and then you have three dependencies as well for MySQL. Uh, but that's a configurable option when you when you compile and build the OpenDNSSEC. And for now, we also have Python uh, for the signer engine. So uh, Python is used for scheduling when the zones should be signed. But all the parts about signing and seccing, etc., those are written in C. So in I think it is 1.2 we will throw out Python and only have C, so that dependencies will be gone. And we also do use Java, uh, but that's for when we do uh, during build time, or actually not when you're building. It's when we are creating a, a, a tarball from our uh, SVN repository. So if you just download our tarball, you won't need Java. The, we use Java in order to convert one file, configuration file, into a format that's readable by libxml. So it is something that makes it easier for us to create the configuration files. But um, once we create the tarball and do a release, then you don't need Java in order to, to do the conversion between the human readable format into the computer readable fo format. And uh, finally, we also have Botan, if you're going to run SoftHSM, and that's the crypto library. And SoftHSM is also using SQLite. So if you do choose to use MySQL as the da database backend for OpenDNSSEC, you still have to use SQLite for SoftHSM. And that's because they are using separate databases. Uh, in version 2 of SoftHSM, you will have the option to choose what crypto backend you want to use. So you will be able to use OpenSSL if you want, instead of Botan. And we're not going to use a database. We'll use a file structure where we encrypt the information. So no need for a uh, SQLite version 2 of SoftHSM. And uh, we have different releases, and you can always, when we do an no official release, we have tarballs available, so you can just download them. We also keep uh, the older versions if you want to try them out. But uh, we, sh so we should soon have a 1.1.0. And uh, you can also download the source code directly from our subversion repository. And we also keep track of our releases, so we, we tag each of the releases, so they're also available in the repository. And we also branch off a release whenever we bump up the version number. So for instance, when we went from 1.0 to 1.1, we maintain the, the a branch of 1.0 to do bug fi fixes. Uh, once you have, uh, have the source code, then you just enter the directory and then run configure. Uh, the part about autoen.sh is when you check out the code directly from our, our repository. And uh, this script will generate the configure script for you. But if you have the tarball, then you don't need this step. And uh, for soft HSM, you don't have to give any particular flags. But in the case with OpenDNSSEC, I think we are missing one row he here, actually. Uh, you can enable MySQL if you want to use that one.
but in version 1.1 that comes, we'll use a different flag, which is called uh, with database backend. Then you choose either SQLite or MySQL. I think the default is SQLite. And uh, if you don't want to use the auditor, you can always disable auditor. And if you want to build the EPP client, then you add uh, enable EPP client configure option. But then you also li uh, you need uh, libcurl in order to, because you're using parts of libcurl to do authentication uh, with the cer certificates. Once you configure the system or the configure the build environment with this configure script, you just run make and uh, then sudo make install. You can also run make check in order to verify and run the uh, the the build checks. And uh, once you've installed it, you also have to do run this command. Um, and if you're installing packages. This will be done automatically by you. But uh, if you're just compiling and installing the source code, you also need to run this command. And this will tell the operating system where to find libraries, because we now installed some, some libraries. And for instance, the uh, soft HSM library, when in order to for the operating system to find this library for some binary commands, it has to reload um, what available libraries there are in the system. So that was it about uh, uh, the installation of OpenDNSSEC. Any questions about that one? It's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just that uh, uh, the most stuff is available on most operating systems. But since we do require the latest version of LDNS, you probably have to download the source code unless uh, you find the operating system which has the OpenDNSSEC packages available because then they have added the latest versions of LDNS. Um, it's also for DNS Ruby. And DNS Ruby is the library that has been developed by Nominet. And that is what we're using here for the auditor. And we also require Botan to be somewhat new. I think it's perhaps eight months old, the version that we require. But uh, I think Ubuntu 804 only have, uh, at least it is two old libra uh, library from Botan. So those are the ones that you have to find. But other, the libxml, SQLite, Ruby, Python, etc., they are just standard components. So let's jump into the next presentation.